Hello everyone, Wolfie here. I bet you came here today because you're either a Harry Potter fan You're a wizard, Harry. Or you're sick and tired of mages everywhere boosting or farming or getting raid spots and gear while in phase 2. I don't blame you, it is a crazy world we live in. No more glorious days of original TBC where things were run for fun. Having one beloved character won't get you far. Anyway, a mage is a bread and butter. Above average GPS output, high AoE damage output, under average support, high tier of CC capabilities and disgusting PvP leverages. Mage has it all. Except healing. But there is a first aid and Draenei race even for that. Let's break down mage little by little, piece by piece. First on the agenda is min-maxing race. I talked about it many times over in previous guides. But the bottom line is that this race for Horde is troll due to Berserk King and Gnome for Alliance due to Expansive Mind. However, humans are not bad either and Draenei has 1% spell hit aura which can come in handy over gearing period, but differences are small. Play the race you enjoy. Talents and specs are flexible and since we are currently in phase 2 where Arcane is dominating, we cannot just talk about the fire spec. Fire spec will be back in play again as soon as we hit phase 3 and with tier 6 gear and tokens. As for frost spec, it is utility spec and is underperforming compared to arcane and fire. However, it does have its use in pvp and aoe farming. The usual optimized fire spec for highest damage output you see on the screen now has only one point to float, depending on the user's preference. Most people like to put it into pyroblast, but improved fire blast is an option as well for fights where mechanics have you moving a lot. Dragon's Breath is also an option, but that's more of a dungeon ability rather than raiding. However, it won't drastically change your DPS. Talents of interest are Improves Scourge for getting the fire debuff on target, Ignite for awesome hard hitting dot after every crit, and Elemental Precision from Frost Tree. It gives you 3% hit rating, which is huge when it comes to caster and compared to Warlock who doesn't have such talent. Rest of talents are straightforward damage increment and sustainability. Arcane Mage talent spec goes deep into Frost Tree for Cold Snap and almost to the top of Arcane Tree. Arcane spec is designed to burst out so much damage without much regard for other stuff, and they're good at it. Also an interesting fact is that Arcane Mages get 10% spell hit rating just from talents and 2 major DPS cooldowns plus presence of mind. Mage stats to go for are easy depending on if you play solo like a pug or if you have static plays in raid composition with elemental and shadow priest. Number 1. Spell hit rating. With elemental precision talent you need 165 points to reach the cap or 16% spell hit for raid bosses. This goes both for pug and static raid member mage. Besides raid bosses, dungeon and raid trash requires only 5% hit rating but boss dps is where it matters for loot and progression. On number 2 you should go for spell haste as a static raid and guild member, but as a pug it is smarter to stack spell damage, because you don't want to go oom really soon into the fight. Having a shadow priest can really help out a lot when it comes to delivering damage over the course of the whole battle. Currently in phase 2 you cannot reach a soft haste gap for mages, but later on in phase 5 you don't want your fireball to be clipped by global cooldown. For number 3 it is opposite to number 5. Bonus spell damage is loved by mage talents and is killing really well with fireball damage calculations and further on to ignite as well. Next is crit rating. It is just as important as others, but something has to take place number 4. Critting has more than just pure damage increase for mage. Every crit refunds 30% of mana cost thanks to master of elements and procs ignite which dots target for 40% of damage done over 3 seconds. This stat is held by talent combustion which is an ability that after activation grants you 10% crit chance on every hit until you score 3 critical hits with your spells. Then goes to cooldown. It is smartest to combine combustion with any spell damage increment option, such as active trinkets for example. Intellect is precious to mages. Having a decent mana pool helps you dish out damage longer, but beside mana points, intellect gives you increased critical chance, which is of course something you want. Arcane mage stats are quite different. We'll make the same parallel of raid static member and pug who might or might not be having elemental shaman in his group. So if you are using spec I showed a minute ago, as a pug you might still want to go for extra 3% of spell hit rating you are missing. If you constantly have elemental shaman then you are set with the whole 16% of spell hit and you follow the rest of the stats like this. Spell damage, intellect, 
crit chance, and lastly haste. For arcane mage, haste does not have as much meaning as for fire mage due to different rotation where haste is given to itself. So rather go for more crit and more spell damage and of course way more intellect. We are all done with lectures on stats, time to figure out how to do damage. Fire mage rotation and main spells used are simple and almost repeatable like warlocks. Create mana emerald and ruby for yourself, it is the best practice to make both. Refresh molten armor and drink up before pull. If threat is not an issue you can open with pyroblast cast if you are specced into it of course. If that is not possible, start stacking up 5 scorches on the target for maximum fire damage increase. You can do it by yourself or if there is a one more mage in a raid you can make a deal and alternate 2 or 3 scorches each at the start and who will keep it during the fight. Now that that is done, you can go downtown with fireballs and icy veins, trinkets and combustion. Just so you can get them sooner before the end of the fight or by the time of 20% HP and bloodlust. Use your mana emerald as soon as you drop 2k mana down and go on. In case you have to move, use Fire Blast. If you come down to 0 mana or there is a mechanic where the boss cannot be DPSed, go ahead and pop your evocation to get mana up quickly. Arcane Mage Rotation is rather simple at start, but it gets rough less and less mana you have. There is a lot of discussion about how to properly DPS as Arcane instead of Herder, Arcane Blast, Ghost Burr. Basically the key to sustain DPS is to manage your mana well. This includes Mana Emerald, Mana Ruby, Super Mana Potions, Evocation, Inner Raids, Runes, Mana Tides and everything else that can restore your mana. You need to have one ready to use while next in line is at least on half of its cooldown. Start blasting Arcane Blast and drinking mana until you are about 40% of your mana pool. Then start alternating with the Frost Bolts. One Arcane Blast, one Frost Bolt. This will prolong your mana further until you get mana restored in any kind of way. If you are still getting low on mana, alternate 2 Frost Bolts and 1 Arcane Blast. When it comes to cooldowns, you want to use them after 3 Arcane Blasts at the start of the fight. This includes Arcane Power and Icy Veins, then Cold Snap and Icy Veins again with Trinkets. Also as Arcane you should use Mage Armor for more mana regeneration while casting. The trick is to never let your debuff fall off. Mages are also second best AoE class. Both Arcane and Fire Mages can hurt quite a bit in the AoE department using Arcane Explosions and Flame Strikes. As Arcane Mage you pretty much spam Arcane Explosion, but for that you need to be closer to mobs. Fire Mage on the other side can AoE from afar with Flame Strikes. Yes, Flame Strikes rank 7 and Flame Strike rank 6 for maximum damage and dots. If you happen to be close to mobs you can cast one or two Arcane Explosions and then go back to Flame Strike 7 and then 6. Unlike Arcane Explosion, Flame Strikes are mana efficient. Due to Master of Elements, where each crit refunds mana spent on Flame Strike and Fire Mage will get his mana back up thanks to AoEing. Why should you bring Mage to raid, regardless of spec? Well, it has a lot of things in its favor. Firstly, as I mentioned already, nice damage output both single target and AoE. Arcane Intellect buff for mana users in the entire raid. One of the best CC capabilities against Humanoid which lasts quite long. Bunch of portals for every major city of the faction and of course the cookies. What mage asks for in return, well especially the arcane mage. Everything. Other interesting and useful spells outside of the main offensive rotation are Blank, awesome CC break and evade spell, Spell Steel, useful in many boss fights and general gameplay. Dickers, which is shared ability with Druids. Invisibility, an interesting spell that firstly decreases the amount of aggro you currently have towards all tanked entities you are in combat with and then makes you invisible and takes you out of aggro table completely while you are invisible. Awesome for evading repair costs. Counterspell, the interrupt ability, dampen and amplify magic for any situation where damage taken is only physical or greatly magical. Fire and Frost Ward for damage absorption, respectively. Cone of Cold and Frost Nova for CCing mobs, and lastly, but not the least, the Ice Block. The full immunity to all kinds of damage for 10 seconds, but you are unable to move or cast. Also leaves hypothermia, kind of like a paladin's bubble for Beerens. Many, many utilities are hidden in a mage. Still not my favorite.
Professions are, as usual, subjective and depend on many factors, such as which spec are you DPSing as, do you want to min-max, do you want money-making professions, do you have alts and similar. My suggestion would surely be tailoring and enchanting for Fire Mage, for reasons of crafted items and enchanted rings, along with money-making potential. And for Arcane Mage, you don't really need tailoring for crafted items that much. At least in phase 2, due to 2 set bonus, you can go with enchanting still and combine it with something like engineering maybe or even alchemy if you are having issues getting your desired trinkets. Gemaging, or gemming a mage if you'd like, Chaotic Skyfire Diamond for meta, Rune Living Ruby in majority of red sockets, but if you are missing spell hit rating you can go with Wild Noble Topaz to reach it. Otherwise you can gem purple to activate meta gem. Later on, in later phases, spell haste gemming will be a way to go. Gemming Arcane Mage is blunt and covers intellect after activating metagem, because haste is redundant as we mentioned before. The best consumables option on the screen for both fire and arcane are my personal suggestions. Surely you can go for more min-maxing or swap a few things around. In TBC there aren't many different choices, you either take what's there or you don't. Although for fire mage there is additional consumable, the flame cap which does share cooldown with a lot of other useful consumables, so use it according to your judgement. Risk it for a biscuit? That should cover the mage and its two dominant specs. I apologize to Frost mage fans as I did not cover them that much in this video. Frost however dominates in PvP and gives icy veins and cold snap to arcane and fire. If you're an arcane mage in phase 2, blast the subscribe button and explode the like button for maximum DPS. Thanks for watching, stay safe and have fun playing the game. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.